In the previous video, I showed you how to use the searchable modifier to do search. And you can use a searchable modifier to do filtering as well. Two different things. And the way you use a searchable modifier to do that is different from how you'd use it to do search. So in this video, let's dive in and see how that's done. Okay, let's see what we're starting with. If you watched the previous video, this is kind of like a little overview. We started with a tab view and we have two tabs. We have a search view and a filter view. And we're going to be working on this filter view right here. So let's go down to the filter view. And as you can see, it's pretty simple, right? It's just a list and it's going through and iterating through some people and it's showing it inside of this person row view right here. And we're not really going to get into that. It's not really the purpose of the video. If you want to see more on how, like how that's done, then you can watch the previous video on search. But I want to save some time on this video and make it a little bit shorter. So we had this observable object here, and that's why it's OO, because it's an observable object. You might know it as a model if you're using it like an MVVM pattern. I'm just stating it for what it is. It's an observable object, right? So call it whatever you want. And it's getting data. So if we look at this observable object, you're going to notice it's pretty light. It just has one property data. And when it's initialized, it's populated with some mock data. Now, we're not getting into like a realistic scenario here. Because really, I'd probably have like a fetch function. And I'd probably use a task to kick off that function when this view loads. But for now, we're just using a simple observable object that has our data. And we're iterating through it. And as you can see over here in the preview, we have all of our people in here. And uh, not too many, right? It's got just name, phone numbers, and email addresses. So how do we filter this? Now, remember, the difference between search and filter is search starts with no data. And filter starts with existing data, and you're going to use the searchable modifier to filter through it. I mean, narrow down the viewable data that you see there. We covered this a little bit in the previous video when we were talking about search concepts and filter concepts. And that's the difference between searching and filtering. It's filtering, you start with data, like in your contacts, and you start typing something in, and that list gets smaller and smaller, right? Until eventually you get what you want, you tap it, and then it shows details. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, first we know we need a searchable modifier. So let's add that, searchable. And we need to bind it to something to store what it is we're searching for. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the logic and a lot of the things inside the view. In a different view, we're gonna move that logic and a lot of these properties into that observable object that you see there. But that's a different video when I talk about combine, like how we're going to do this with combine inside and keep everything inside of our observable object. But not this video. This video, we're going to keep it more simple. So we're going to create a state property to store that search term. And it's just going to be a string. There we go. So the searchable, it's really just like a text field, right? And you have to bind it to some property to be able to work with the data in some way. So let's resume this and take a look. So there's one very interesting thing here when you're working with filtering. Notice when we go back to the search example, notice it showed the text field right away, right? And that's because there's not a list inside of this V stack right here that's pushing that text field up into the uh, navigation view. So when we come over here, that text field really is there, but you just have to pull down to view it. Now you might think that's not very intuitive for your users, uh, and you might want to show it by default. And that's where you can use another parameter inside the searchable modifier called placement. So let's add that. And you can see it's right here. So we're going to use placement. And it's going to be a search field placement. So we hit dot. And this is what we want right here. Uh, we want to show it in the navigation bar drawer. That's what it's called inside that navigation view. It's a navigation bar drawer. And for the display mode, you can see it's this long object right here. So if you just hit dot, it'll give you some options here. It's just automatic and always. Right now it's automatic, meaning uh, it's going to hide in the navigation view unless you pull down. So we're gonna say always. So now you notice here that when I, I don't have to pull down anymore, right? It just uh, shows it automatically. And I can't even hide it. Even when I scroll up, it's always there. Okay, now nothing's going to happen when we run this and try it out. Let's just run it real quick. Go to the filter tab right here. I start typing something in and nothing happens, right? Because we don't have any logic. We don't know when this term is, uh, the search term is being changed. And when it changes, we want to apply a filter to this data and only show matches. 
Now this is very similar to how you did search. So let's add that logic. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to come to the search view and I'm going to copy this logic right here. It's gonna be the same exact logic. Now this property on my observable object doesn't exist, so let's add that. And it's basically gonna be the exact same thing. Okay, this error should go away. Okay, so if we run this, you notice it's still, well, let's go to filter. You notice nothing is still gonna happen. Filtering is taking place, but here's the difference. Remember in search view, we put our results inside of this, uh, this trailing closure here. We're not gonna use that for filter because we don't have to. We don't have to show the results in a different view. We just wanna filter the source of data that the list is using. There's a couple of ways you can do that. So one is you could use an inline ternary operator, right? So let's stop this real quick and let's make that update. Okay, so we wanna say when you're doing a search, when there's something inside this search term, use search results, otherwise use data. So let's copy this search term here. We'll just put some logic in here real quick. So if it's empty, meaning you're not doing any search right now, then just show the data. Else, use the search results. And let's see what happens. Let's run that. Go to filter, and we start typing in. And notice the list gets smaller as we type in, right? So it's working. But you know this logic, this ternary operator here, and then switching between, maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe there's a cleaner way to do that, right? So one way is you can create a property. And then the property can just do all this logic for you. It can be a computed property. So let's create a computed property here. And you can call it anything you want, right? We'll, we'll just call it list data. And it's just an array of person data object. And then by default, when you have property, like properties have getters and setters, right? But by default, it's going to use a getter in here. So I don't have to specify a getter. So we're going to say if the search term is empty, then we want to use the observable object data, else we're gonna use the search results. And then we're going to take that property name and we're just gonna use it here. Oh, and I do need, <laughs> and I do need return on these right here. Okay, so let's, let's add a return there because it can be one or the other. Okay, now let's test it again. And let's see start typing something in and you notice it's filtering. Okay, very good. Now, nothing, you know, while it's filtering and it's, you know, making the list smaller, you might want to animate that in some way. So let's just add animation real quick to this and then this video will be done. So we're just going to add animation here. Animation modifier needs two things. What kind of animation are you going to do? And what value or what property is changing that triggers that animation? So we're just going to leave it at default and the thing that's changing is your search term. Every time your search term you're typing in, most likely the data is gonna change. And that's what we wanna animate are those rows appearing and disappearing. So let's use search term here. Okay, let's run that again. And now you notice there's some animation to it, right? So as I delete or change data, it's animating those results, those changes in the list. And it looks a lot better. Okay, that's it for this video. You learned how to use the searchable modifier to do filtering. And the main difference is you don't have to have another view when you're filtering. You're only using the searchable modifier to change the source of data that's being displayed. So filtering is starting with existing data. And when you filter it, you're changing the source of the data that's being displayed. And searching is starting with no data. Now there's a lot more here that we can do. We can change all this logic. We can, we can take this logic and we can move it into our observable object and we can use combine to do the filtering for us. The combine reacts to something happening on the UI, right? And it does things automatically for us. And that's gonna be done in another video. And in another video that you're also going to see is, well, what happens when you're done searching? So here, you know, if we take a look again, you know, you're searching for a reason, right? You wanna to try to find something. So you wanna find uh, Scott Smith, but nothing happens when you tap on this, right? Well, we wanna show a detail view on Scott. And when you do that, there's some things that have to happen. Like you wanna cancel your search. So 
you go to the detail views, but then when you navigate back, you might want to reset this screen so you come back and it looks like this again, and you can do another search. There's a way to do that. There's a couple of ways to do that, and it's kind of tricky. So you're gonna learn that in a different video as well. If you wanna find this video in the code, then go to codewithchris.com. He hosts all my videos and he has a membership there. So he manages all that. This code is also in my books. So you can go to my website and get a free gift there and uh, see what my work is all about. And we'll see you in the next video.